Among 45 Division I players, averaging 20 points this season, Zion ranks first in field goal percentage, while Barrett ranks 30th. Zion could miss his next 125 field goal attempts mm. and still own a higher <laughs> shooting percentage huh. than his teammate. And this is interesting because mm -hmm. you alluded to this earlier, Jalen, about the fact that you don't think Duke's going to win it all. You think that there are some holes in what everybody sees in their game and at least the way they play as a team tournament time. Why is that? So I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not foolish. I know Coach K is amazing. I know Zion is terrific. R.J. Baird is a left-handed number five. I root for those young guys. Hmm. I have no <laughs> anger. I'm not salty. I'm not unhappy with my life. I'm not still bitter that they beat me four times. Who are you talking to? The camera's <laughs> over there. Okay. Go ahead. With that being said, as somebody that's been on the floor with some great Duke teams and watch how Coach K has built this program, there was a, <clears throat> a reason why he didn't initially embrace the one and done. Because what I'm seeing right now, two players are basically taking the lion's share of the shots, scoring most of the points, and getting most of the conversation. Usually it's about the totality of the group. And I think based on this dynamic, when they get in the tournament, and one of these guys struggles shooting from the floor, one of these guys get in foul trouble, that's going to be the game they get bounced. So if you ask me if I had to take Duke or the field, I'll put all of my money right now Ooh. on the field. Ooh. Mm. Goodness. Yeah. Well, you it's agree? A, okay. Well, me, yes, but this is where I don't agree with them, right? I, too, lost to Duke. But I hate Duke. I can't stand Duke. <laughs> so I refuse to say anything positive. But to his point, when I lost to them in the national championship, it was Carlos Boozer, Shane Battier, Chris Duhon, uh, uh, Jason Williams. Uh, then then they, they just had so many players. Even coming off their bench, they had Dante Jones, who was going to be there the following year. So they had a team. It was hard to beat them with the team. If you have one or two guys, that if one guy gets in foul trouble, if one guy's not shooting the ball well, it's much easier to beat. It was very, very difficult to beat that team in 2001 because they're their debt. I would just point to Cam Reddish. And look, I I'm of the mindset that there are some veteran teams out there that could give Duke some trouble later on down the stretch. And we're talking way down the stretch in postseason. Tennessee would be one of them, the number one team in the country right now. But I think Cam Reddish is crucial. If he steps up as a third guy, and they've got other guys as well, but to me, he's the one that you could really point to to say they actually do have somebody else. I agree. Cam Reddish is a terrific knockdown shooter. It's going to be a lottery pick. Jones is a great defender. True. It's going to go in the first round. But we're not going to talk about them today unless we're having this conversation yeah. because their two guys are so dominant that they're taking the shots. They're scoring all of the points. They're creating all of the highlights. And it's a new dynamic for a terrific program. And if they were in a second or third year, you would see these guys flourish. But we're talking about them just being great players over a four-month span. And that's just too difficult. Yes, two guys can be great players. Other two guys might need more time. That